Okay, here I am again, and look at all this stuff. I'm having a panic attack. What do I do? All this stuff. How do you let go? How do you really let go of all this stuff? Your memories, your dreams, your reflections, these physical aspects of it that show up in everyday life or, you know, history of your life. So, in practical living. So, my question, and maybe Brenda Feuerstein of traditional yoga studies can answer it for me. How do you let go? What is non-attachment? I do need things to function, but what is it to, what's holding me back from letting go? Obviously the ego, but. So look, I mean, here's my example. Here we have some art stuff. You know, I collect a lot of nature stuff, have art, I can ship to St. Croix, and where I'm setting up an art studio, and get your kids into art, of course. But look at that skull, isn't that great? Nature's so amazing. And the wasp nest, I mean, how do I let that go? Oh, look, look at the puppet we made my daughter. You can make those too, great body awareness. Uh, look at that, little arms move, you know, puppet. Whoa. Okay, I guess I'll save that, huh? <laughs> I need to save that. Well, it's a demonstration for story time yoga. And then, uh, what's this? Just art stuff. So ship it, throw it. We'll fig I guess in time we'll figure it out. The process of letting go. Do I need any furniture? Got to get rid of that. That that stuff always comes back. Maybe that's the key. Trusting that it will come back. Right? Right, Lakshmi. Oh, there she is. Hi, Lakshmi. Blessing us with all the abundance we need. Those two lotuses up. One got busted in the subtle realms. Her red, the active color. Her hands dripping coin in abundance. And she's sitting there in her promised stance of abundance. I guess that's the answer. You trust in the universe. The things just flow, ever fulfilling, never ending, eternal. And as the universe, we're just all becoming aware of ourselves as it, through the ego. Is it the whole ego's perfect purpose? That paradox of it's the vehicle that's not us, but it's the vehicle that shows us us and our true existence anyway those things I contemplate I mean well, okay what about this <laughs> this is my grandpa's cat I mean 1920s last Great Depression and we are in a great 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 depression you know or it's pretty bad you know or we're headed there so prepared <laughs> and maybe I hang on to stuff because my mother I mean they were depression era people they hoarded stuff you'll see my father's house where I grew up in a minute, my mother was a terrible hoarder. There's the hoarder show. I auditioned for hoarding. So, you know, my father's a concentration camp. How do you know? You can't let go all that trauma. And my mother, well, she's another story. A lot of stuff about her to hold on to that lack, that fear. My grandpa, when Roosevelt confiscated, confiscated everybody's gold and he had to turn it in and the banks. And same story, huh? So, anybody want a moped? Too bad we can't ride mopeds in St. Croix. You die on them. We need sustainable living. We need to have James Howard Kunstler come down and have a salon about sustainable living. St. Frederickstead and Christianstead are so cute. Let's have an arts revival. Yeah, I want to bring all this stuff. Arts revival. And have some retreats. Please come to our retreats. And have fun and you know community revival and our library save your library that's what we do all right oh my god what's in that box we'll find out okay so how do we let go let go trust it's going to show up anyway right lakshmi and be that eternal participating in duality so that you just recognize that believe it and it's so that's why we make believe Everything else, there's reality, but you can add that magical thinking and create the universe. Although some studies say, oh, it's not true, but I at least want to have fun and re-enchant my world in the meantime. I mean, just look around you. It needs a story to be told. Namaste and have a magical day.